dan 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 um that was my pathetic attempt at the jaws movie when that great white comes up every time that you're supposed to feel afraid welcome everybody this is my stanhopia never bloomed for me but it is growing incredibly well has been for the last three years and um, it's the setup I thought I could be cute and tweak the options a little bit and it would still bloom but no and it is time to do something about it as you can see I've got new growths coming out the sides and I'm like okay this is gonna be one hell of an exercise and I'm going to tackle it together with you. I do not know what to expect, anticipate, or how I'm going to get this out. It's going to get messy, but it has to be done because I think I can still stand a chance to slide these growths out without damaging them too much. Root growth is a go-go, as you can see. Once upon a time when I got this Stanhopia, I had two in a pot. So there's two pieces in here, but who knows how they've merged together. It's going to get messy. And then fingers crossed that we are successful. I think it's time to get Stan out of this basket. I will explain to you what I tried to do. And let's see if there are any deteriorated spikes that tried to bloom but didn't make it. Okay, Stan, you're up. Okay, so let's have a look at him a little bit closer. Let me explain my current setup that I thought would work. It worked well in how well Stan is growing. But uh, you see this little basket here? It's actually a little heart-shaped basket. I sprayed silver. It was all about aesthetics and making my Stan look pretty when he blooms. Well, um, yeah, so that's too big for any kind of media. So in order to line it, I took this material here that is anti-slip for carpets. And you can see how pliable it is. It's stretchy. So I thought any spike would be able to come through that. Well, as you can see, no spikes came through at all. But we have new growths able to squeeze through this material, which I find not surprising, but why are you down here? Ah, here's another one. So yeah, um, initially I put a layer of moss on the bottom, lava rock, and then placed the two stand pieces into the basket. But I think that maybe the lava rock was a problem. If I had just left it with moss, it would have eaten the moss, Maybe I would have gotten a spike, but that's what this is about. It's time to change it up. Okay. Show and tell is over. It's time to get serious. Cousin It is not with us today because I need space. A lot of it, I think. So he is watching from a distance. I do not know what I'm going to encounter. I do not know my next step. I have a plan, but it all depends now on what happens when I start taking the lava rock out. That was the easy part. I want to be careful, but I don't see a chance of being timid around this whole subject. So this might look quite brutal, but I need to see where the separations are. Where is the lava rock? I'm going to do a lot of root damage, but all this needs to be done at this point in time in order to get at the bottom. If it wasn't growing its growth on the outside, I probably wouldn't have addressed this at all. Not even to this point. And if I want to get this out, 
then I'm going to have to start somehow picking lava rock out in order to see where I'm at. Because in here, it's one solid mass. I can feel that already. So yeah, there's a lot of root damage going to happen now. But I think it is vigorous enough, it is growing new growths, that it can take the root damage it's going to sustain at this point in time. And I am curious to know if it tried to bloom. So I'm going to pick away at this and come back sporadically if I encounter anything of interest. We have the first casualty, new growth. And look, in 20 minutes, this is what I've managed to achieve so far. That's going to take a lot longer than I thought. And I can't even pull on anything of the plant. It is absolutely solid in here. I do not know where to, how to go about this. I mean, I have a lot of new growths, but you know, to snap one off like that within 20 minutes of getting into the job, that's not nice. That's not very encouraging, you know? So I don't know. I don't know, I need another two sets of hands to wedge this out somehow. Yes, I'm at a bit of a loss here now, uh, but we're going to get through this and it might go into full darkness by the time I'm done. Okay, I've got give. I've tipped it to the side and I'm pushing from the bottom. I can feel it giving. I'm trying to see if I can somehow not snap these two new growths off. That's one. Okay, the other one is looking precarious because it's getting caught with that material. That material's wrapped around the hook and pulling down. So let's see if we've compromised it or if it will come out. Wow, okay. Ah, it feels okay for now. Wow, you see what I was trying to do? That's an open basket if I don't know anything else. Very nice open basket. I sprayed it in silver, put lining in it, and I thought, perfect. Hmm. Maybe now it becomes a wall mount. So let's see what goes on. I can get this stuff off, but there's roots all intertwined in here. And I do need to separate them because I haven't got anything big enough. Again, yes, it's mostly inorganic and I could just move it up, but it didn't bloom. So I need to get underneath that lava rock and get it out. Okay, change of plans. Okay, as it's one solid shell, I've put it on the stand without the basket. So I'm going to try and cut off as much of this I can, this white stuff. In the beginning, we can be as cautious as possible. Whatever we happen to encounter through the process is gonna probably change the entire strategy. One big, gorgeous, solid mass of Stanhopia. What's not to like, right? With the exception that it hasn't bloomed, despite growing superbly. The first year I got like 13, 15 new growth. Yes, they're two separate plants, but as they were in one pot basket, I consider them one. And 
They went mental the second year with 20 new growths. So apart from the setup not allowing them to bloom, the setup was very agreeable for the growth. Look at this. All right, I'm going to just cut this part off right here. There we go. Well, that is a testament to it liking what it's been in. Maybe I just happen to have a non-bloomer. I can't see any spikes that have not made it yet. <laughs> I don't see that it's tried to bloom. Let's just keep going. But you can see that this anti-slip material has not deteriorated either. So as a basket liner, if you're into something organic as a basket liner, then there you go. Anti-slip carpet stuff works great. Now I've got my mind set to the fact that I do want to separate them. Was that an attempted spike there? I do want to separate them, sorry for that squeak, also to make them more manageable, but looking at this, I'm like, are you kidding me? It's quite the root system. Yes, I am very annoyed at my new growth, <clears throat> but I guess that's the least of my worries at this moment. What am I going to title this? Sorry about that squeak. There we go. It's one big, gorgeous mat of roots and lava rock. Gorgeous. So I am going to be using carpet liner a little bit more often. Oh, here we go. That is what a failed spike looks like. I've had two now. I wasn't sure with the first one, but here we go. It tried to bloom. So it has tried and that's the second one I've seen. And it didn't make it through the lava rock surprised. I didn't have this planted so deep. After all this time, it's climbed itself out of the basket. So it looks like it was planted high up, but that wasn't the case. It was like in its own little hollow in the basket. So I thought that any spikes that are tr trying, attempting a bloom, I honestly thought that they would have plenty of give because obviously the lava rock wasn't that deep. There wasn't a thick layer for the lack of a better term. But I'm assuming now that because the roots are so active and sturdy, they themselves create a barrier and then they compact the media because all this is just rock hard, one big mass. They compact the media and then the spikes can't make it through all of that. My guess, I don't know. I only have one Stanhope here and it is called Chocolat de Te Neuf for what it's worth. And yes, this is a beautiful name from given by Olympus 1975 on eBay keep the roots a little bit hydrated as we go. It's 
So I'm doing this at the end of August. Yippee-yay-yay. What perfect timing. Not. Do not do this if you can avoid doing this. But I finally figured out what I wanted, what I want to do. The Ninja Mounts gave me another option with that hob filter. So I want to try that out. I finally went to outside the house to see what supplies I could see that I could work with. And then I saw the baskets and that being all, well, oh, great, didn't see that. That being all together now, I want to get a move on and get this done. I think here was another remnant of a failed spike. I think this is that same thing. Unless, unless of course, it is gobbled up moss. I doubt it though. All right, so I'm going to work my way around. If I find anything more interesting, I will definitely switch the camera back on. But uh, there's no need to be watching this as it hopefully comes apart into two Stanhopias. It has taken on the shape of the basket. It's a heart. <laughs> it's a heart. It's a beast. I don't know how to get in here, you guys. Still working away bit by bit. So I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> While I keep picking away at this, like some deranged chicken, I have to uh, just bring up a point I've noticed when I touch the surface, how spiky and, and prickly the surface roots are. All these little fine roots, woo! Don't underestimate them. They feel like needles. Like if you're in a forest and you touch the pine needles, the straw, pine straw, has that prickly effect. So I just wanted to bring that up while I work away. Because every time I touch up here, I'm like, ah, I'm getting poked hard. And now I can smell barbecue. <laughs> okay, I'm working away. So, um, yeah, what a mess. I don't know how much longer I can, I have the patience to do this. But I've been considering taking a knife and cutting through it. But again, I can't do that because I've got lava rock in here. There is, there is no way because I, I tried to take it from the top and sort of push down past the spiky, spiky roots. Ouch. To get maybe a split from the top going. No dice because it's lava rock. And even if I wanted to go, I would need a chainsaw. That's how, that's how ingrown all of this is. I need a chainsaw because maybe even a chainsaw that will break because again, the lava rock. So, eh, we're going to, I'm going to be here a while. I mean, it is impressive though, isn't it? When you look at that, <laughs> I just want two pieces. That's all. Give me three. I don't care, but. Like I said, I can't just go ripping at it this way because it's all entangled and I can't take a knife and go do the harakiri, chop. Even if I damage pseudobulbs in the process and get smaller pieces, I can't do that because I won't get through to the bottom. Well, do you think I made a dent in here? Uh, it doesn't look like it, does it? I did get some out. Oh, but I keep getting by the upper spiky roots and then there's some down in here that are quite spiky as well. Now there's two plants in here and it divides through the middle here but I still have lava rock on the bottom. I know I do so I'm going to see by cutting in here to get at it because there's no way I'm not able to the two apart. So this is what I'm doing right now. Cutting into the setup here and getting the lava rock out bit by bit. I 
and doing a lot of damage in the process. But I'm sure she's going to be fine. The question is, will I? Whew. We keep going. And we have plenty of failed spikes now. There we go. I hope that's in focus. I can hardly see what I'm doing. I'm so dizzy. One in there. I'm coming up to a little nook of rotten spikes in here. So we'll keep going. Just to let you know, this is what I'm doing. Cutting in. And then also using my secateurs prize out the lava rock in there like that. <laughs> Major surgery going on here. You remember that game? You played the doctor there and you had all your tweezers and you couldn't touch the edge otherwise. <clears throat> yeah, that's what I'm doing now. But I'm really, really attacking it now. Uh, from with all you know what I said before, caution and this and that? Yeah, I can see that there's no need to be cautious here if I want to get anywhere. I don't, I do have all day. I don't want to be here all day. <laughs> there's the difference. So this is a major, major operation. And honestly, I did expect some resistance from the lava rock when I potted her or when I basketed her like this, but I did not expect this. Not one moment did I expect it to be like this. There was more moss in here than there was lava rock. And it seems now that the moss has all did, but deteriorated that there is more lava rock than anything else. And a tuber, the things we discover, a tuber from a fern. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Right. I shall continue to inch my way into the center of this. And then get out what I can. And hopefully, I am still trying to split her. No, I do not need two Stanhopias, but I cannot do one big one. They're getting so heavy. It is a very, very heavy orchid, this one already. It was heavy with a lava rock in it, so it never got hung up either. But now it's quadrupled in size since I got it three years ago, so <laughs> imagine. It has to be split. I'll be back. Okay, track of time. I've lost count. It's been a while. Where am I at? At this point, I have pretty much reached the center of the underside, removing as much of the lava rock as my secateurs could encounter. Whew, I'm telling you, they're getting sharpened at this exercise. They're finding all the lava rock and I'm pinching them out with them. Now, what I want to do... Oh, look at that. So what I want to do is split through here. And I thought, as I can't break it this way because of the table, I'm going to try and break it this way. Does that make sense? like butterfly up against and towards me, holding one piece down and trying to bend the other piece towards me. And uh, well, the idea is not to do much more damage to whatever growths are here, but this is not looking good at all. To be timid about this, I don't even know where to grab where I can apply pressure in order to lift the other piece up and crack it. I don't know where to get the force from. It is so... Let me try something against the table here. I know you can't see this, but... Oh, maybe that's going to work. Just one moment. Set up. 
set up, set up. All right, maybe I can use the table for leverage. Here goes nothing. And if it doesn't work the first time, I think this leverage thing is going to work long term if I keep trying. All right, let me just do some. Oh, I lost a growth. Another one. Okay, I guess. That's all part and parcel of what's going on. All right. I keep telling myself that it's a vigorous Stanhope. Yes, she'll be all right. Just to comfort myself. This has got to be the most radical thing I have ever done in my orchid hobby. And I'm not sure I like it one moment of it. There is no give. There will be more damage than I would even have wished for. At the best, at the best, I thought I would lose a lot of roots. And if I'm losing growth now, that is more than I actually bargained for, especially this time of year. So I don't know why I keep fiddling with the outside. I think I'm procrastinating trying to get into the inside. There we go. Oh, you guys. All right. I need to take a break. Ooh. And I need to wash my hands and soak this up with some serious seaweed calcium magnesium. Like, as they say in my language from Kenya, Swahili, Sasa Hivi. It is now a matter of an emergency. I'll be right back. Oh boy. <laughs> After these two are have had their soak poured in oh you see i even thought my big balls would be big enough <laughs> um yes maybe not but they'll fit for the soak Whew, please this little new growth here has been through so much so in here i have prepared a total of 500 of calcium and magnesium at six ph because that is the way it came out and i didn't want to mess around with upping it a bit so i'm going to leave them in here now for as long as it takes for me to make their new baskets which in retrospect i should have done before taking them out of their pots to be honest because now i feel like i'm a little bit pressed for time and i don't i can't allow myself an error I want these guys settled in by late this afternoon because I want the cool night to give them some help after the shock I have put them through. So I am now at 4 p.m. So I'm in, I'm in good time, but I can't allow myself any mistakes with making their new baskets. So that's where they're gonna settle down and then they can watch their new home being created because now I can also start raising, taking the umbrella down because the sun has passed over to the other side. I'll give them a good drink and I hope they think nothing of what just happened. Mm -hmm. I should be so lucky because I might, I might lose two or three more growths. We'll see, let's get to the baskets. <laughs> 